Well, what's the crack? Welcome to another episode of Bookshot. Your host, Tom and Landy here. How are you getting on? I'm not sneezing or coughing. That weirdness. I don't... It wasn't... It says it wasn't COVID. But I kind of felt like it. Anyway, you're all very welcome to another episode. If you're brand new, have a gander. This is like 230-something. There's a rake more. In, in approximately 230-something more. There's a rake of ramble pods according to Patreon. No, it's actually true. If you are a Patreon, you get a ramble pod in the middle of the week where it's me just kind of going off and giving out yards and being fairly loosey-goosey where I pull the punches. I, I just talk like a bollocks, basically, for an hour or so during the week. As well as that, you get the ad-free early access to the likes of this one. Like this one would have went out on Thursday night along with the video to today's as well. And we're going to have a live one where I invite all the Patreons over on third we're going to do it in the third sunday the third have a few drinky winkies get loosey goosey don't record it so people can just have a right bit of crack to the new patreons that join this week fair play to you well done thanks very much for jumping on board i gigs coming up uh the new show clattered is going to be hitting kerry we're hitting north kerry on the 22nd of july and we're going to be back again Tipperary, back again cork limerick is on the cards galway for later in the year and we'll find a venue somewhere in dublin but I haven't been looking, to be honest, because <laughs> there's Wexford on the cards, Waterford's on the cards, back up the north, I think Port Rush, I think. Anyway, to be all right, follow me on all the usual platforms to keep an eye on that kind of stuff. Don't worry, I'm not shy about talking about it, so it'll be there for you when you find it. If you are listening on Spotify or Apple, hit subscribe and leave a five-star rating. Anything less than that, I don't need it, you're grand. Make sure to hit the bell as well. Apparently, that'll tell you when it arrives in your phone. Other than that, you know, maybe whisper it into your mother's ear. That there's a great podcast called Bookshot. It's there for you. Anyway, that's all the housekeeping out of the way. Today's guest, uh, Jesus, this was a good episode. It, <laughs> we, we don't know. I don't know. I can't even tell you what we talked about. It was just silliness from beginning to end. What kind of a interesting bits about Craig's life. But other than that really we just kind of slagged each other a bit and there was a cat involved that kind of ruined everything because it was far too good looking and um yeah I had an absolute ball chatting with this lovely lovely man about windows if you need to know anything about double glazing windows talk to Craig Doyle (laughs) enjoy the chat I've kind of been intrigued by you you know because we're big Damo, Damo and Ivor fans in this house Oh, are you? Yeah, Jesus. yeah, huge. Yeah, yeah. And I just, that you weren't actually that guy. <laughs> that's called acting, isn't it? That's it is, what that's called. It is funny Amazing. when you meet people. And especially, I lived three years in, in four years in Enniskerry. And you Where would. Where did you, you be, live? Little Newtown. Did you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why we, did I never see you here? We did. We met for about 30 seconds. We did. One, our, our son was a week old. And you were very, very nice. You were stopping. You, were, you have a baby out of the week old. We're like, yes, because yes. fucking yes. Christ, yes. Because <laughs> yes, we're going to kill each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it is funny. Like, if you queue him for coffee or whatever, and they go, here's a game. You're like, yeah, it's a game. oh, yeah. And they're like, oh, oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were one of us guys. Jesus. You know, right. It, it, yeah, it, it's, I was, the, I think I was the, probably the only person aside from Grano, who wasn't from where they were supposed to be from. So, okay. yeah, everybody else was kind of, they were from the, the the real thing, but me it was just, I was just taking the piss. I, I didn't, to be honest with you, Craig, it was the first bit of acting I ever did. Read Is that right? I did oh, comedy yeah. sketches for Republic Italian and stuff, but yeah, sure, yeah. and even still, I didn't know what I was at. Like, so, yeah. no, and there was next to no direction. They were like, you just keep going, Tom. And they'd film it, and they'd cut out the best bits. It was I the most, it. yeah. It was so good. It was so good. Oh my god, I loved it. It was so good. Um, it, what are you in your garage? What are you in there? Oh, I mean, I built a studio. I built it so okay. you. Oh, look you at see that. It, it, oh, nice. It was. It was either that. Like I was looking at a, a shed, and a shed out was going to be twelve hundred quid for a thing that I could actually fall through the side of. So when yeah. I just fucking build it out of plywood. Like, oh, well done. As simple as that. So. So it's in the house, is it? No. In the no, room in the house. I, this is a very, this is an advice I would give to anybody. If it's only seven feet from your house, have something to go to outside yeah, yeah. the house. You bet. You bet. <laughs> I have one, but it's turned into a gym. 
now for the kids during lockdown and I have an office in Shankill and that's now my sound. So if I didn't have COVID, I'd be in there and I, it's great. I do everything from there. I sell, there's nothing I won't sell from there. <laughs> <laughs> well, the windows, the people next door who are, I don't know what they do. They, but like the man in, is next door shouting about windows or pet insurance. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember reading that people, but there was some, I don't know, of course, some journal who liked to use slang words, which I can't believe that journal was allowed to do that, but they were slagging, slagging you off for a Windows ad. And I'm like, oh. motherfucker, you would yeah. bite somebody's hand off for a window yeah. ad. Are you yeah. ju- would you stop on that? You know, but people like, are we podcasting right now? There we are. We are. Yeah. Are we, are we yeah, in it? Are yeah, we we're in it. We're in it. We we're in it. <laughs> we're in it. <laughs> um, the uh, people will do that. Now, I made an error early on where I here I couldn't. I was with the BBC forever, you know, I, I went there as a young fella. And I, I, when I left, you're like, I'm allowed to do adverts now. And so I just said yes to everything because I hadn't earned any money. I was skint. And uh, so you do a lot. People get upset. I'm doing the windows 11 years now and I've been through. I mean, there it's such a long time. And but I love them. They're great. I don't. I love Windows, obviously, because you can see <laughs> they're made of glass. There's so but many positives to Windows. So, I mean, without them, the world would be darker, and <laughs> and stuff. But they also pay well, um, and I've been doing them a long time. And yeah, people just get annoyed, don't they? Ah, oh, cheek of him earning yeah. a living. How dare you? Cheek of him. Jesus. Yes, Why? mattress. Oh. Mattress Mick can make a prick of himself selling mattresses. Oh, I know no. they think it's gas. Oh, I know, I know. But like, I've always had that. Yeah, I've always had that. In England, I don't get that at all. Now, people shout it at me and chant window stuff to me. Do they? Constantly. And yeah, and I at rugby grounds, you know, I'll get, oh, I cry, go, sell us a window. And I'll, <laughs> you know, I love it, actually. Leicester Tigers recently, I was there and there's like, I was in front of the stand. There's about 5,000 people in the stand. They're like, oh, come on, doily, sell us a window. And I looked up and one guy's, are you going to sell us a window? I said, the guy's about 60. I said, well, when you move out of your mother's house and they all turn on him then, you know, and it's great fun. Oh, uh, that's it's banter, fun banter, nice stuff. Yeah. Um, I do, it doesn't happen as much over here. I just, because they just, you know. It's a, it's a <laughs> weird one, all right. It. it is, it is a weird one. Yeah. I think, do you know, it's down to the numbers game. And I've worked this out before. Like, I, I used to do this on, a bit on stage where it's, there's only 5 million of us max. So we all kind of think we're class. Whereas when you got 50, 60 million people on an island that isn't that much bigger than Ireland, all of a sudden it's the ant effect. Like, the, you know, in Minions, when they're all, the claw, when they're all, look, <laughs> yeah. so you do anything that steps yeah. outside of that. Awesome. Yeah. Or, it, whereas in Ireland, you know, a fella plowing the fields go, I can fucking sell windows. Not a bother. Yeah, yeah of course. I can sell windows, you know. Yeah. But I, I, to speak of Damo and Ivor, and you talk about whatever to do with uh, pride or manners. I remember Rick Mail, the great Rick mm. Mail. Telling me, I was asked because he'd never been to Ireland before. He was just not properly, Do you know, he'd passed through it or whatever, but he, he just couldn't get over the food standard, the standard of food or whatever. And I've spent, <laughs> That's yeah, so funny, isn't it? That was it. I know. <laughs> and you're probably thinking the same thing, Tom. Never have an English sausage, never have an English sausage. Don't have an, why would you ever, even like they try and pull off the rich, I'm not knocking a Richmond sausage, right? Oh, they're rough, Craig. But Come on. You're not knocking them because you might get an ad. And compared to, well, there might be one, I'll do that. Richmond sausages, a taste of home. Ah. Um, the uh, I like I I like any sausage. I love a very cheap sausage. Yeah, like I love a cheap sawdust sausage. Um, you know, especially from like an English cafe. And Lovely. Go, red or bread, red or brown, brown please, brown sauce, and the bread is just like that. You know, that bread that goes that yeah. on your teeth. I love that. I love I love a good cheap sausage. But nothing now. An Irish sausage is it's a different level, isn't it? different level like a super quince or whatever they're called now That's yeah a great sauce. well they still i think they still use the super quince name if you know it's musgraves or whatever but it's we got spoiled here you see that's the thing we got spoiled with good sausages but he that was his thing for the whole week he must have put on a stone that week he was in and he was they had him staying in the i suppose it's what is it it's beside the beacon you know that that hotel that's there oh yeah um yeah yeah but he just ate steak like for lunch and everything he's like how's your beef so good and i being such a culture i just had couldn't keep it in anymore because everybody else at the table was just going oh, I don't know Craig it's, yeah, yeah, I, you know, I don't know Rick and of course I had to let it up well I'll tell you if you want to know scientifically why it's good but 
I said, what's what's the crack? I said, what what do you do? I said, you you speak like you're still doing quite well. What's the crack? What do you do? Are you doing voiceover work? Are you doing ads? This is the best thing I ever did. Says, I cleared the mark, she said. He says, I'm on a big fuck off house down the country. He said, I live down the country. And what would happen was he was after doing a bunch of the Nintendo ads for Game Boy. Okay. And they would give him a loose script. And he go, yeah, that's shit. And just, just do it himself. Yeah. He said, I knew nothing about the games, nothing at all. But they put me in costume. I'd look at the set and go, this is what I'm saying. And they paid him something astronomical, like two or three million. Oh, my in God. The, in these in the early 90s. Yeah. Okay. And they were on holiday in Somerset. And he, he burst in for a slash, jumped out of the car, stood down a little lane. I was going, God, this would be a nice place to live. And his farmer just popped up behind the hedge. Now, whether he did or he didn't, it was a good part of the story. <laughs> yeah. He's a CP all over himself. I said, all right. He says, how much to buy a house around here? He says, I'm a house if you want to buy it. And he bought the house, but he bought the guy's <laughs> house or nice. bought a house that he had. Really? And he named it how this is how little he cared about people and its opinion on ads. He named it Nintendo Towers <laughs> because he was able to pay cash. He says, Take it, take it. Because the money meant nothing to him. It was like it was for the softest gigs he ever did. Oh. Like, yeah. Well, and as I sit here in Windows Villa, I, I <laughs> just want to understand that story. <laughs> as I sit here. In double glazing villa. Yes. I get it. I get and understand and respect that. Yes. You know, because I often say to friends, they stay, the PVC stays white for life. And I built this house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's be honest. You didn't think you'd be saying that today, did you? That's, I get that. That's the Everest. Uh, that's the Everest line. I'll tell you a funny story about the Everest adverts. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. This is so insane, right? So the first ever, ever, the first ever Everest advert was many, many years ago, right? Yeah. It was filmed up in a place called the Tan Hill Inn, which is up in the middle of the Pennines. It's the highest pub, higher than Johnny Fox's, right? Okay. It's the highest pub in England, way, way up in Yorkshire, right? And this place in the middle of nowhere. And uh, so they're, they're, they filmed this advert and it's great and it's very well known and blah, blah, blah. And then 20, 30 years, I come in as the new ambassador. They said, we're going to do the first ad there. Now, the owner of the pub is, uh, you know, she's, she's, uh, <laughs> I might get into trouble with this, but she's, she's in an interesting, you know, person. She, she lives in this pub up in the middle of nowhere in the Pennines. Uh, she has a pet sheep anyway. Class. And uh, the pet sheep uh, <laughs> will come in and sit in front of the fire in this pub, right? In the middle of nowhere. And, and anyway, I got too close to the fire and, and its fleece went on fire, right? And, uh, and they had to put the sheep out and it was on antibiotics. It was on antibiotics. So um, the night before we fitted, the, we, 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 were, uh, we were doing the advert. A couple of fitters went up to fit the new windows in, the, in this pub. And uh, she was chatting to, and I don't know what quite happened, but she was about to inject the sheep with the, with the antibiotics and the, the fitter annoyed her. And she just got, I, I stabbed him in the hand with the sheep antibiotics on <laughs> and plunged it into him. And we arrived the next day and this guy's like, Got to sue Everest. He's got to sue the sheep. He's got to sue. I'm like, this is a. I just came to sell a window. This is mental. Yep. And it's been like it's not always like that, but yeah, it was. Uh, that was the first ever one. And um, when I left the BBC, I had been with the BBC like man a boy. Really, I went to college in L London. Am I saving you questions? Are you even interested? You are in absolutely questions? saving me. This okay. is. This, okay. But this is what I wanted to know anyway, regardless. Well, like, I give we'll... you, a, I give you the quick recap, right? So I go to London to do a postgrad in journalism, in a place called the LCP. Now the LCC, the London College, is part of the London Institute. Do you know that 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 song? I met her in St Martin's College with the yes. Pope, right? Yeah, it's all that's the university, right? So they do this journalism postgraduate there, and I wanted to go there. My brother went there, and he was taken by the BBC when he was there. And they take in twenty five a year, and you get onto that. Yeah, you're a pretty good chance of getting the job with the BBC. So <clears throat> I was kind of over there and uh, I did that and I got a job as a reporter with the BBC while I was in college. I was in the system, you know, it was just, that was it. And I was delighted with myself. And then all the BBC jobs and the Tomorrow's World and all that malarkey happened. And then um, I was in BBC Sport and it was a bit hit and miss. And then it, it, was, it, it was a hit and then it was a major miss and then it became a hit again. And I didn't, I was like, yeah, it's grand, you know, but ITV approached me and they said, we'd like you to, we're going to get some rugby in and we'd like you to do some rugby. And I, uh, I thought, geez, that would be great. I'd really fancy that. So I went back to the Beeb and at the same time, the Windows people approached me as ITV approached me. They said, we'd like you to be the ambassador. Ted Moult is 
they hadn't he's a long time gone we'd like it to the new ted mold uh ted mold sadly killed himself actually uh who was the wasn't original it, it wasn't it out a window was it by any chance no <laughs> Window got stuck. Couldn't. <laughs> he actually shot himself. I believe. That's how you do it, though. That's not. I like. I like Ted. If you're gonna do it, don't flute around with wrists or anything like that. Just take it and just eat a shotgun. Like if you're gonna do is it, that, do it. Well, he was a farmer, you see. So he was a you know tough old dude, but God love him. Anyway, he's. T- well, you know, thanks, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely house. <laughs> Lovely. house. Did, have you given? Space. Is there any tribute to Ted at all there? No. no windows. <laughs> <laughs> Some good windows there. Every time I look through them, I think of them. God bless them. God bless his soul. So I go ITV. Come and say, will you come and join ITV Sport? I, I'd loaded. I was doing bits and bobs. I was doing a bit of BBC, BBC Sport mainly, and I was at a radio show in Capital, and I was having a nice time, but it was a bit quite varied. And, and they said, look, we'd love you to come. We, we just want you to come over full, just the whole lot. And at the same time, Everest approached me. And I went back to the Beeb and they said, well, look, because they, they hadn't gone well with the Beeb and had gone well again. And they said, look, we're sorry what happened before. We'd love to sign you up for a, a long-term contract. I said, can I do adverts? And they said, no. Ooh. So I said, no. <laughs> I went back to ITV. I said, can I do adverts? They said, yes. I said, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Where do I park? And that's where Everest began all those years ago, about eleven years ago. So, um, yeah, still with them. You make it sound like a like the handiest whirlwind of all time, like a lad who just stood on a travelator and all of a sudden stuff has been thrown at you left, right, and centre. <laughs> yeah. She, anybody who yeah, knows exactly. anything about telly, you must have sidestepped some amount of shite, like to Absorbed. stay cur- to stay current, man. But I haven't, have I? Like I've got in. Have, have you not? I mean, it's, it's two different worlds. It's the UK career, and there's the yeah. Irish one. The Irish one was not. It was not a good. But the English one was. I guess in England I was doing the stuff I know about, and in Ireland I was probably trying to do stuff I didn't know about. And mm. you know, that's the that's the seek do what you know and do what you love, and and when you do that, you you usually be okay. So, so so that. That's, I think, why it's worked o- over there. But no, I mean, like, you, you, you have ups and downs all the time. What I've learned is that <clears throat> I think when I did the travel show, I thought this that show when I was watched by a lot of people, uh, the yeah. holiday program, and you, you kind of you go, I'm going to stop doing that now and do some other stuff. But sure, it'll just keep coming, won't it? Yeah, it doesn't. Of course. It no. doesn't. The phone, <laughs> people aren't sitting there going, the executives don't wake up going, how can I help Craig or Tom? <laughs> no. <laughs> I couldn't give a shite about either no. of us. So I learned... And it took me a while to learn that you need to work very, very hard and um, and have a lot of humility and uh, and be smart and be easy to work with and make other people's days easier. And, 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 and that's how it happens. And do things that pay badly, but interest you. And once you're doing, I don't know, you find this time when you're busy, you're busy and more oh, stuff yeah. comes. But if you sit back waiting for stuff to happen, it doesn't happen. So look, there's been a lot of things that haven't worked and there's been things that have worked, but only because I think I live in the space now that suits me rather than trying to do the things that didn't don't suit That's me. a great place to get to though, isn't it? That's it takes kind a of, while. It, it does take time. a while. And I mean, you look back and it's like, ah, yeah, it zipped by. But then you start thinking, oh, that brick. Oh, that other brick. <laughs> oh, that other brick. <laughs> So I'm, I'm my own dalliance also with RT as well. So, you know, that, yeah. <laughs> you know we, we can dance around that that circle all evening. Well, do you know, though, on, on, on that, and I have to be careful what I say here, because I, I, I said something years ago on a podcast. What did you say? What I'm did you gonna, say? Well, I'm not going to repeat it because I... Oh, it got, up, you, it got you in proper well, trouble. it was just it? ridiculous. I, I just was asked a story. I asked about RT and I came up with a ridiculous, uh, you know... Uh, well, it, was, it wasn't even a metaphor. It wasn't even anything clever, an anecdotal metaphory type thing. Yeah. Just to try and sidestep it. Uh, and I, I, I just, next thing I know, the papers are given out. Can you hear, can you believe what Craig Doyle said about that person? It's like, there's no other person. I just made up a story to compare. <laughs> I'm not even going to, I'm scared to mention it again because I, you know, I, I don't want to bring all that stuff up, but um, it, it's, I look back at that stuff with OT and, you know, the panel worked really well because the panel I really, was great, great fun. I had comedians around me, and I just my what I'm really good at is not saying very much on television. That's actually perfect. It's That's... Allowing other clever people say stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. That's the key. And then suddenly, when you're the one who's meant to say all the stuff, 
and then they think you're going to be funny and you're not, that's when you have a problem. Because there's a big difference between someone who says funny stuff and a comedian. Because yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. deliver material in just a different way. And um, and that's why the comedians are hosting most of the shows now. They should be. They just deliver material so well. And I think I was kind of confused about what I was. I never thought I was a comedian, but you're, you're trying to present in a funny way. It's annoying. Of course it is, because you don't know which shoe you're supposed to be wearing or what hat you're supposed to be. Because yeah. But it's annoying it, for the people watching, Tom. I suppose, but the, and they know. don't know. The thing is, in the same breath, they don't know why you're good or and they don't know why you're bad. Because the truth be, yeah. they don't, they're nobody's an expert. You know, until you're really in it for a long time, you're not an expert in it. Yeah. Because they're going, I don't know why I like that. Or I don't know why <laughs> I dislike that. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you'd be an easy target. Especially, you know what I mean? You were an easy target. Well, well, of course, you know, because you, heaven forbid, you know, you weren't from, you know, the, the hills of Sligo. You know what I mean? You were, fr- you know, you're from up near the capital and say no more. That's enough for us. You know, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, that actually, that, do you know, that's a really interesting thing. I remember a, a Sunday newspaper running. When I think about it now, would they write this article now? It's not that long ago, but it was about uh, privileged people. Right. People born with silver spoons in their mouth, right? And and they chose 20 people from all walks of life, politics and media and business and all, et cetera. And then they had me and they said, Craig Doyle is the epitome of the person. Now, this wasn't a nice article, right? <laughs> Craig Doyle is the epitome of what we're talking about here. Privately educated, silver spooners, blah, blah, blah. Everything on a plate. And I'm just thinking, and I have that thrown at me quite a lot. And I never said anything because, you know, I don't want to tell, I don't want to let everyone know the circumstances of my upbringing because there's no one's bloody business. But then... You know, my, my dad passed away a couple of years ago. And, I, you know, I was thinking, Jesus, you know, they worked hard. Yeah. They didn't have money. My mother had three jobs to pay our school fees. Thank God for post dated checks. I was not born with a silver spoon in my mouth whatsoever. And as much as my parents aspired to maybe one day be able to buy one, um, they they worked really hard. And my, I mean, my mother, she's still with us, thank goodness. She's an amazing woman. But I, I, I just thought, God, you know, I, I grew up in Stillorgan in a semi-D house. All the lads around me went to Benildism. Great school, but like, hey, like, it was fairly normal. And, uh, they're, you know, they're talking about me like I was, you know, one of the bloody Smurfits. <laughs> you know, but it's that's, like, that's, this is that's not, what I'm saying. This is not the case here, you know. I'm not knocking them either, but it was just like, I thought, yeah, I thought it just is a bit unfair. But you say nothing, you just take it, don't you? You just take the stick. Of course you do. Yeah, of course you do. Like, I mean, I, I've i been to, on the flip side of that then, the disappointment, like the like you talk up with Demo and Ivor or whatever. Mm. Like, I've had it openly said on air, like, God, Jesus, I mean, you just kind of lied to us and stuff. I'm like, oh, Jesus, God, for Christ's sake. <laughs> you know, but I, you, I can, I can understand, get where you're coming from that. They'll make a perception regardless. You have no yeah. choice in what they come up with. And there's yeah. no point in coming back at them because no. you're like, just what? take it. You're not in the same realm. Good yeah, looking, just, thanks. There's just, just, just take it, just take it. And I was doing the panel. Remember Andrew Maxwell? He said, "I'm going to do this thing with you." Where he said, "You're, I'm going to be your butler." I don't even remember Max and I was yeah, Max's yeah, butler. Yeah. It was very, very funny, but it was just easy to roll with it, and it was brilliant. It was very generous of Max. He was a very funny man because it gave me something. It gave me a character. He was giving yeah. me a character, and I said, "I'll roll with that. That's easy. I'll take that. Thanks, Max. You know what you're doing." And uh, Maybe so. I, maybe I'm a fault for a bit of that. But um, yeah, funny days. But I mean, it's you couldn't possibly have been born with a silver spoon in your mouth to work your whole off the way you work. You know what I mean? Lads don't have that work in them. I know those lads and they don't have that level of work in them. Like for the people listening, Craig, this will tell you a self-employed fella. Craig has COVID right now and was still going out of his mind that he texts me and goes, man, we do this podcast or what are we doing? <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> and I'm going, only a self-employed fellow would be that antsy. You, I figured you were going to be on holidays after the Premier final, I said, Premiership final. I said, let him, let him have, I, I won't bother him for another week or two. I'm but, so bored. I'm doing a <laughs> podcast. <laughs> There you go. I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. I said, Brian, I'm not name dropping, but I am. Trico, I sent him an old text earlier. And he said, he said, how's the COVID? I said, so bored I'm doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll take it. Much like the window adverts, I will take it unashamedly. And I'm leaving that in. That's staying in. That'll That's actually be the in. clip. 
That would be the clip. So the promo clip for this. I was so bored so that I decided to talk to Tom. And that's, that's how we know we're in a bad I didn't way. even know it was your podcast. I just knew there was one sitting there. <laughs> Could have been anything. Could have been Dermot Gavin's gardening one. I've no idea. <laughs> You did, like what? And was like was the root? I'm only joking, Tom. Jesus, we spoke last. This is all. This was all in the diary, Tom. I know it was. I know it was. But you know, in don't a loose get, diary. Look, there's a fourth ball there, Craig. Please don't. <laughs> I, I mean, in all, like, you went from the talk shows to the, to sports. Was there ever a point where shows were put? Like, you did the travel show as well. Mm. Not, you know what I mean. Not bananas. But, but was there shows put in your, you know, across your desk? Where it's going? We're thinking, Craig. What do you think of inflatable bananas? Just putting it out there first. <laughs> <laughs> you know, where you're going, oh, 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 Christ. There was a time not so many years ago where if they'd had that conversation, I'd be like, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> I would have said I was in before they finished the word banana. <laughs> yeah, pay. I mean, I have four children, you know. I, 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 you know, people must realize that, you know, TV is scary, the media is scary because you don't have a job you don't necessarily have a job you, you can plan out the next two or three years with. So you, you, you have to act on the moment. Our four kids to feed and education, clothes, etc. And uh, so, you know, y y you, you do have conversations where you go, yeah, I could probably do. That. I mean, we did one show for RTE that was probably actually I did do it. We only managed five of them and then they pulled it. What was but that? It was called The Social. Oh, The Social. You I didn't enjoy you didn't enjoy the social. On, I wasn't even on Twitter. I've never even been on Twitter. But I, I have to laugh, right? This really was a real eye-opener for me. So we're doing this show. We do the first show. And one of the producers, um, nice fella. They were a lovely team. And actually, I, I feel quite bad because I remember the show was pulled and I had to go and do some interviews in newspapers. And I, I remember starting going, hi, everyone. Just to let you know, the show was shite and I know. Now, any questions? <laughs> I know if I save all the nuanced yeah, questions, yeah, like yeah. what were your views? So or he didn't didn't like that. I can't understand why. But one of the producers, he's on his phone and he's like, hey, we're we're trending. We're so trending on Twitter. Like we're just all over Twitter. It's amazing. We're trending. We're number something. I went, gives a look at the Twitter thing. And like every single one of them was calling me an arsehole. <laughs> I was like, is this still good? That's yeah. still great. It's still That's great. Still we're trending. Great. Okay, it doesn't matter what you're trending for. It's as even long as you're trying better. To be. It's gotten at the moment. The bigger dick you can be, <laughs> doesn't matter. It doesn't. Well, that was a. There was a brilliant producer on it, and she was she was filling a brief in, and and she she tried hard, but uh, you know they could probably do it now. Actually, maybe it was a little bit too soon for it. But we tried a few things. I enjoyed it. It was a great experience to do those shows for RT because I'm <sighs> presenters say this, don't they? But I actually am quite a shy person in in terms of them. And on one on one, I'm great, but it, it put me in a, on a stage or something like that. I'd be, I'd, I'm terrified, still terrified. So to go into a studio and have to kind of try and entertain an audience was was really a real test for me. It was a good challenge. It's yeah, it is. It is outside. I don't know the how you you all do it. I don't know how it, it's you it's go completely into audience. weird. It is weird to try and explain it to people, but it is after a while, then you relish it because you get again, scared beforehand. No, not so much anymore. Like. You're, you can be cautious sometimes, you know, you're going, oh, for fuck's sake, why have they got that window, you know, that door open at the back, letting a ton of light, you know, things like that. You're going, what? can we get this shit sorted? Just typically comedy only ever goes wrong when it's where comedy shouldn't be. You know what I mean? Right. Let's book a comedian, you know, and thankfully I don't do those anymore. But I remember I did a couple of warm ups. Uh, I did two. Literally, I did a couple and they didn't ask me back, nor it was for art. <laughs> 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 it was <laughs> I did the, at no point they were, had no need in a comedian there but for some reason they wanted to fill time yeah. with put in front of the studio audience who were not there for happiness this particular show <laughs> they were there to see was misery born <laughs> was it prime time <laughs> it was it, it was something that masked itself as as being a bit lighter but it wasn't this particular night it was it was a cutting edge it was Brendan O'Connor's show oh yeah and all the people they come show I liked that show oh yeah but yeah. there was in the two subjects he had that particular night, Brendan came out before I came out to entertain the audience. And the two subjects he had were assisted suicide and abortion. I said, but now, before all that, let's have a comedian come out. And this prick walked out with a microphone going, all right? And they fucking hate, they hated me. And the all I could do was laugh at the moment. I went, 
Well, I, none of us want to be here, do we? Yeah. None of us want me here at the moment. But look, <laughs> I've got six minutes, 27 yeah. seconds to knock out of the park here for that check to clear. So we're, we're getting <laughs> you're, through it. You're getting it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you, uh, I don't know how you guys do it. I just, yeah, I don't know how you do it. It's, it's terrifying. I've, there's a very good friend of mine, a guy called Martin Bay. Do you know Martin Bayfield? Martin Bayfield played rugby for England and, yeah. and the British and Irish. Six foot 10. Monster. Monster. Yeah. And a gent, real gentle giant. Uh, amazing man. Um, he played Hagrid's arse in every Harry Potter movie. When you see Robbie Coltrane as the what? giant Hagrid, it's actually Martin Bayfield with a Robbie Coltrane head on it. He wears his head. You have to, do, I'm going to get him on this podcast. He's such a great guy. I'm going to put you in touch with him. Right? Yes. So he wears, they made Robbie Coltrane's head, Hagrid head, and <laughs> put his head on, right? And have to walk around. But he did all the scenes. She knew all the Harry Potter. He was in it for 10, 10 years, you know. And uh, we still, now and again, I'll go, uh, okay, let's hear from the coaches. Here's, a, uh, here's Hagrid's arse. We, I still, <laughs> I, but he's, he's such a great guy. But he is the best after-dinner speaker in the United Kingdom, right? Go away. He, yeah, he, he's and, and awarded that award. He has that badge somewhere. They had a competition, and he's the best guy. And he would do three, three of these things a week. 600, 1,000, 2,000, 500, 250 people, doesn't matter. Boom. Every three of them a week. Bang, 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 bang. You know, just insane. And I'm like, how do you do it? I do, I do one dinner a year. I do, the, I do the, the Gallagher Premiership Rugby Awards at the end of the season. And I'm, I'm a gastroesophageal reflux for a week. <laughs> but again, I'm it's terrified. It's, it, he's knocking out three a week. By week five, it's just like... The engine is so hot at that stage. But the, the problem is, with because of people like you, funny people like you and Martin Bayfield, when they invite me to do a dinner, they think I'm going to be funny. Oh, yeah. And you're like, oh, God. So you think <laughs> of a joke. I spend a week. I'll, I'll tell you my opening. Well, do you want to know the opening line? Oh, yeah, please. Okay, yeah, yeah. So yeah. the opening line, and you don't know. And I, this is why I admire comedians so much. They're so brave. So we're in the Honourable Artillery Company in London. Okay, this is where this award ceremony is. Spanky. It's it's an it's it's the oldest battalion in the British Army, and it's still their barracks, and they rented out this their hall. Yeah. So I walk in. I go, "Good evening, everybody. Have you had a nice jubilee, eating cakes with your neighbours? You English are so funny, aren't you? Nothing, nothing. I went. Ah, no. Look, it's great." As an Irishman, to be here, it's the Honourable Artillery Company, the oldest barracks in, in the country. And, um, you know, the last Irishman that was under a spotlight here was being interrogated, right? And there's not a noise. There's not a noise. And then suddenly they start laughing. They start laughing. I go, I'm only joking. He wasn't interrogated. They just beat him up. They just beat him up and threw him out there somewhere. And, and like, y y then you have them, right? But it, it took a week to build up that bravery to do that. And I, I don't know how you guys do it week in, week out. I would, it, it would destroy me emotionally. Yeah, the, the first couple of years. I, but some guys that never, like PJ Gallagher, can't. Like I've gigged with him and he's selling 2,000 tickets and he's backstage incandescent. But he's, he's so just, this, this isn't fucking right, is it? I shouldn't still be this. <laughs> I said, no, you actually shouldn't be. They're all actually here for you. But most after a while also you what you you've got two brains running in the same way that you like you do live tv mm -hmm. on the side of a pitch or somebody could kick you up the hole it's not a likelihood but it's a possibility no i get actually no honestly that happens you get kicked up to the hole a bit yeah, i get kicked in the hole and ugo Manya has this habit of sack tapping me when i'm off i'm like stop doing that Tra on i know yeah i know we'll let he'll get mm, yeah. yeah at some stage no, you're not. I'll, yeah, I'll, don't give I'll, I'll, I'll knock him out. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see you fight Ogum on you. <laughs> you're like one of those, wouldn't it be like one of those dang, 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 punches? <laughs> Your Why entire arm cripples. <laughs> Why isn't he feeling <laughs> that? <laughs> Why is he laughing at me? Oh, God. Stop but, punching But, me. You, you know, you're doing you're doing live telly on the side of the what? On what? You get chucked, water chucked in you. Like, we've seen lads capitulate live on telly like it was a james haskell sounded like he had gone in reverse or something. oh yeah that was amazing yeah that he sounded amazing. like the battery had one battery yeah. had fallen out and he still had one left <laughs> he, the poor bastard everybody so, was like are you steaming here's an amazing thing right uh if you uh if you so what we get in our ears what i have in my ears anyway when i'm live is i have my ears split so on my left ear i hear the gallery so yeah. that is the director the main producer and the pa 
Okay. PA is counting down. Ten seconds. Nine, eight. Throw to VT. VT over. Ba ba ba. Get to ad. Ba ba. Direct director is telling me the shots they have, and the producer is saying, "Okay, Craig, nice. Wrap up that shot. Move on to the next thing." Right. In my right ear, I have TX. What's going out on your television? Okay. Yes. Right. So I hear the guys in it or the VTs and all that kind of stuff. Now, without that. Like sometimes I'll do another another company and they won't put all that in my ear. No, no, I want to hear them organizing dinner in the background when I'm on air. If I don't hear all those those conversations, but if there's a delay, if there's like a half a second delay in your <laughs> ear from your own voice, it makes you sound drunk. And I know this because when I was started in BBC, I was a bit cocky in, in the radio and I used to have to present a show called BBC Radio Suffolk Business Matters on a Thursday night, right? <laughs> And oh I my God, that's like business. honey. That's like honey the way you just uh, did that. It was well, like, that's exactly I, how I would hope to hear it. I mean, I wouldn't I, listen to one second of it, but at the same no, time. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You, I mean, you class. really wouldn't. Like, it'd be like, <laughs> you know, be true prices. And uh, so I'd, um, I'd pre record most of it. Like, and I'd just sit there, like, watching telly. And uh, I'd have to do live bits. And they knew, the bosses knew. So they, they slowed down my, ear, my earphones. To like half a second so the delay starts and you start speaking like this it's very confused try it try it and that's what they did to james haskell better still though we had one recently where a director of rugby was doing an interview quite a serious dude he's doing a he's doing an interview and the director meant to speak and the presenters are going oh god just shut him up when you can and accidentally, <laughs> accidentally put it in the ear of the director of rugby who's been interviewed and he said, I'm hearing voices, who said that? And he w- they wouldn't speak to us for about a month. Yeah. It's a mad thing. It's a mad thing. And you, you also, like, if I'm in a restaurant, I'm listening to conversations over here. I can't, because you just train, your, your brain's so trained to listen to. You're talking about that you're two brains. You've two brains, so you know. What, but what, you've, your, what you've what done, your one is doing. you've one running ahead like a pace car. So the pace car is on ahead maybe 15, 20 seconds. And then your real brain stays with everybody else. And what that is doing is really it's, it's perception. And almost 99% of the time it comes true. It's like this moment, you're, you're ahead all the time. And then you have your real brain that's in the room. Oh, so you have yeah. your one going, this is where this is going to hit, Tom. Now think, think of where they're coming from. So when you, when you said to them um, about coming out in the, the artillery that night, mm-hmm. you were like, well, the last guy that was here. <laughs> now the problem with why there was a pause yeah. They had no fucking idea that there was going to be any humor involved because number one, they're British, and number two, they're in an army barracks as the oldest okay. of all. So they're already a bit stuffy because a lot of lads are scratching their arse, literally going, Jesus, I don't want to look at a line here. And then you're banging them with a the joke straight away. <coughs> okay. okay. So, so what you should do is either have a warm up act or be prepared for that moment and point okay. out the elephant in the room. At the moment, I, I won't say it on air, but uh, he'd be afraid, you'd be friendly enough with him. I'm Going, I'm coaching him in oh. after dinner speaking. Oh, and, uh, no, no, Rob he's... Carney. <laughs> it's Rob Jesus. Carney. It's not it's Rob so... Carney. It's, it's not. Rob it's Carney. not. No, it's not. Rob Carney not. doesn't have to. He just, just he just has to stand on stage. You go, hi, it's Rob here. Coach, then... <laughs> what's the crack? Love a bit of farming. Huh? Sorry if my jeans are a little tight tonight, but um, let me jeans. I mean, my genetic makeup. It's outstanding. <laughs> Oh, do you want to see my brother? Come on in. Come on. There's two of us. <laughs> you have a brother? <laughs> <laughs> There's... <laughs> that's wrong. Uh, that's that's wrong. so bad. That's Dave wrong. would be okay with that, Dave. He'd be all right. Professional right. rugby player for 12 years. He'd be fine with that. It's a dream that it... Yeah, like, was rugby always... Because you've done... You did You did the golf. And you, I know you did the TT. You did golf, didn't you? And yeah. you did the TT. And you surely have done soccer at some stage. But... Was there always going to be rugby if you could get there? Like, yeah, rugby and golf really. When I, so so, um, my I came I came from <clears throat> very much a rugby and golf household. There, my my dad loved sports more than yeah. he would watch. He would watch kind of coke can kicking down the road if it was on. I, I'm gonna miss. No, he'd watch anything. And like I remember as a kid watching like five day test matches with Ian Botham and stuff. And going to school, going to anyone see the cricket? They're like, shut up the cricket. <laughs> But like he would watch <laughs> everything, and and um, so like I was going to rugby matches from a very very young age. Uh, I was in lands the old lands and road in a pram, and uh, you know rugby. Dad was in. <laughs> I just had a notion of you selling chocolate out of it. <laughs> yeah, in a pram. Yeah, I was in the pram. I mean, I was twenty six. Things had gone badly. 
and uh, <laughs> I was trying to flip some Mars bars, but you know, out of date Mars bars. Um, the uh, so he yeah, so so I was always that's what I just rugby was. We we're in St Mary's Rugby Club every weekend, and or, or then the golf the, the Grange Golf Club, and you know th these things. And uh, I don't know how they paid the fees. I've no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how they did all this stuff, but the um we we that that was it. That was life, you know, and, and all the good things. I was thinking about this recently, you know, somebody was asking me about the importance of rugby at some some conference thing I was at. And I was thinking about like being there every Sunday, crew beans in a big pot and having the the, the lemonade and all that and the orange rugby ball with the end if you kick yeah. it, you break your foot, you know. Yeah. yeah. You'd be smashing into each other, just having a great time and then I remember I have a very faint memory of it, but when uh, to bring these down a bit, but when my my we had a, a, an infant sister who who died, and it's funny. I remember Dad bringing my brother and myself to the rugby club to tell us. Do you know what I mean? The, the, right, the, yeah, yeah. The safety of that place for him. Well, his wife's in hospital ill, you know, and he brought us there to tell us. I thought that was really interesting. What sport is, and that, look, you can replace rugby club for a GAA club or whatever. You know, it's that space, isn't it? Yeah. For, for, Back then, particularly for a man, it's it's everyone's place now. But for you know, he probably wouldn't have felt there were many places he could go to because he didn't know what to bloody do. You Not know? at all. And, and then all the good things, like when things were going a bit shitty in my career, it was always rugby that came back, and you know, jobs in rugby that got me going again. And 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 it, so I'm very grateful for it, and I know it really well. I was I was a very bad rugby player. <laughs> You said that like, so matter of factly. Like I, I once tell scored you, a try over the twenty-two, like a but a ball down and yeah. yeah. That is the only second time in my life I've ever heard of that, and it happened. I played Alan Quinlan was my school coach. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, was he? yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember we were playing some mad school. Like we'd won, we'd won the Munster Cup or whatever, and we played some. There are mad hooers, you know. It was one of these schools where lads, you know, they might bring a gun to school, you know. They, <laughs> but they were just mad young fellas. And this one lad, he took off his big strong kid and he dived over to 22 and I remember the ref kind of looked at and then looked at us and I went oh give it to him give it to him it's, <laughs> yeah. it's fine it's fine because he looks like he we're only 16 17 and he this kid looked like he'd a more of it you know what I mean like he yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He, he, he stayed back a few years or like we'll leave it to your man you can have that try why is he a facial hair What's that in his face? Oh, oh God! Male pattern baldness in fifth year. Jesus. Well, those we, guys would have terrified me when I was a kid. So I was ter I could do all the bits. Even now, I can like do, I can do I can do keepy uppies and all the stuff with the football. But when I'm on the pitch, I look like I've been shot. <laughs> Are you all arms and legs and everything? All arms and legs. My mother was talking to me about this because you know you have scoliosis. I said I know I have a little bit of scoliosis because that's maybe why you run funny. <laughs> I run funny. I run, <laughs> I run funny now, do I? I run funny because I've been running. Style. I've been running all my life, and people have been watching the running, going, "He runs funny. Maybe it's scoliosis." Now you're telling me about the maybe it's my special legs, yeah. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! Yeah, Paul, what, what, what age were you when she said that? Maybe you run funny, like how? Uh, uh, Fifty-one. Like literally about you'd, two you'd months ago. You'd, you'd been seen she on the me, telly running somewhere, basically. No, she told me recently this. She told me recently this. Um, <coughs> anytime I do run or dance, I've COVID. I tell you. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> anytime I run, like I won't dance. I had to dance on TV recently and I will never do it again. Like, it's so bad. Because I A, sober. And B, I was sober. <laughs> you can't dance sober. Who made you dance on telly if I you know. weren't in Dancing with the Stars? It was just ridiculous. So, uh, so... But running, yeah, I kind of um, they uh, when I even walk in the studios, <laughs> the sound effects guys in BT, right? If I have to do a big walkie bit, and we're, we're rehearsing this, and I'm going, and then they do this. All you hear of the sound effects is because <laughs> <laughs> uh, I walk like a duck. There you but that go. could be like there might be a touch of a culture in you as well, because you know there, is, yeah. there would be. There would like there'd have to be like, and at some stage that genetics comes through too, and it's not even scoliosis. That's just prepar preparation for you know having wellies on in a wet field. Essentially, that's all that is. There's no shame in that. It's just from carrying stuff. It's getting you ready to carry stuff. Oh, that's I swear to God, I thought I'd always a cool walk. Like yeah, but you took to fifty one before your mother told you, and then it took to me being on national television. Damo and Ivor had happened, and season two was or season one was coming out, or episode one. And I came down to Tipperary because nobody in the neighborhood had ever been in a 
you know, at comedy before. So I went sitting in my parents' place and first two scenes I was sitting down and I was driving. So they were fine. Everybody was, you know, the accents seemed fine. And then the next, the third scene, I walk into shot. Craig Doyle, I will tell you here now. <laughs> How they let me continue didn't rip up my contract. <laughs> I walked from that car in Fox Rock to that front door like a man who had a calf across his shoulders. It was disgusting. <laughs> this weird head bob thing was just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh my good Christ. It's terse. I look at people with a beautiful walk and yeah. I just, I, I just, the envy, the envy is enormous. I, I, you know, uh, they walk like they're gliding. Uh, Rob Carney, Jesus, what a lovely walk. God, you know, he's got I've a heard it. Walk. I've heard it. I've heard it. Um, he's got a beautiful walk. Oh my God. Ryan Tobert, he's a gorgeous walk. He glides. I think he, it's the lack of body fat. He's not carrying any baggage, any luggage. Any I think physical luggage. He's, he I, I think he's physically, he's he's actually defies physics. I think he's actually floating just it's, a couple of millimetres. <laughs> I met him in Air Square in Galway. We were passing each other. And it was actually a gig I was doing with Maxwell. It was the opening of the, the comedy festival in October. And I was walked past and he just, he stopped dead. He went, oh, it's a fantastic mustache. I went, you're goddamn right it is. <laughs> and, yeah, and he went, he went, do I know are you you're you're a comedian? I said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And kind of explained the scenario. He went, God almighty. And he walked off that mustache. But I remember now that you pointed out subconsciously, I thought, Yeah, my gorgeous. god, that man walks like a superstar. My TV's just come on. Hang on, my COVID TV's just come on for some reason. One second, bear with me. <laughs> no worries. Why does that happen? How does the TV come on by itself? It's <laughs> it's That's it, it heard dad. Ryan Tuberty being spoken about. That's oh, my sorry. dad. Did you That's want my that? dad? <laughs> my dad up there going oh my god he's so bored he's doing a podcast <laughs> he's got nuts to the tuberty chest oh jesus christ <laughs> good god it's recycling week and everything he'll be out there doing the bins i know i got him done yesterday i'm raging for you rage oh, <laughs> well i can't do them i can't i'm not uh, i'm not allowed downstairs i'm completely isolated here oh oh christ i'd kind of forgotten yeah. what the rules of it were yeah yeah well in our house anyway because yeah, we're going. We're going away on holidays in a couple of weeks, and um, and uh, but all their friends are going away. It's, what, it's Jesus, Dad! I'll turn the TV <laughs> off. The <laughs> problem. Oh my God! <laughs> the ghost of Mister Doyle goes. Even this is boring. The bejesus out of me. He was never and that I'm judgmental when he was alive. <laughs> He's probably hanging around with a bad crowd up there. That's the problem. Yeah. With that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your son? Give me those binoculars. He's up there with Jerry Ryan going, I wouldn't listen to him if I were you. I wouldn't. <laughs> Jesus, he talks some shite. If it's not rugby, I'm not interested. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of the most loveliest man on the planet dying and getting in with the, the wrong crowd. The wrong crowd. <laughs> <laughs> My, uh, He's I love the idea. Heavenly nightclubs till five in the morning. It's like you, sh you should see this place, man. It's kicking. Just imagine. And then when I die, going up to heaven and not recognizing him, and then people going, "Your man's nuts. He's so much fun." And then him ignoring me because I'm now not cool enough for him. Imagine he's, that. He's now rebuilt lilies and he's naked <laughs> in, in the library playing the piano going, oh, the piano. he's no son, son of mine. He's no son of mine. He's zero crack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I love that idea. Right, I'm going to play with that idea tonight in my head. Just sit there thinking about him up there. It's been a nightmare. Um, I've no idea what we've talked about. I sure, a whole pile of shite, really. And that's Is the it? beauty of this. Yeah, yeah. A whole pile of nothing and shite. We've learned next to nothing about each other other than we both appreciate a good walk. Um, I'm going to tell you Tuberty's walk. Beautiful, beautiful mm -hmm. walk. Um, so <laughs> many years ago, I played in something called Soccer Aid, right? It was the first ever Soccer Aid they had. And it was up in Old Trafford. And I, I was part of the rest of the world team. Sounds like a shit soft drink. You know what I mean? From the east. <laughs> soccer aid, soccer aid, soccer aid. Not even burn your teeth. That. <laughs> <laughs> not even I do that advert. <laughs> yeah, you would. I, I do. Would, yeah. Well, so, if you're not doing it, I'll fucking take. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm like, uh, I'll um, soccer. Aid. Okay, I'll do that. Uh, and I had to go to a hotel in Chelsea for two weeks in the build-up to this big game. It was the rest of the world against England. So I arrive at this hotel and they go, Mr. Doyle, actually, there's one of your teammates 
is over. So Ben Johnson, right? What? Ben Johnson, the <laughs> disgraced sprinter, uh, is, is there. And I'm like, hey, Ben, I'm, I'm Craig Doyle. Um, and uh, we chat and we have dinner together. And then the people start arriving and they start arriving. And we go for training the next day. And so I'm on Gordon Ramsay's team, right? <laughs> With oh, Jean-Franco. Jean-Franco. Uh, we spend weeks together anyway, uh, and, and we play this match in, in old. Now, I'm having the greatest time ever. I'm hanging around with all Tony Adams and, and Les Ferdinand and Jamie Redknapp after. It was, just, it was just so much fun. And they said, we're going to behave like footballers, right? Rude Hullet was our manager. We're going to train like footballers. We're going to go out like footballers. It was the, the best crack. But it came to the game. And I'm in the dressing room, the away dressing room in Old Trafford. There's 74 and a half thousand people in the stadium, what? right, right. And they announced the team live on TV the night before. So I'm starting. I'm starting right back. In goal, I'll try and remember the whole team, but in, in goal, it's uh, Peter Schmeichel's in goal, right. <laughs> and then it's myself, right. Then Dunga. <laughs> what? Five World Cups. <laughs> Dunga, right. Marcel Desailly. And uh, and Gareth Thomas, right? Uh, in the midfield, it was um, Gianfranco Zola, um, some actor. <laughs> I can't remember his name. Um, Gordon Ramsay is up front with Maradona, right? What? <laughs> David Shinola. Ah, look, it was nuts, right? And we're playing against all, oh, like... You know, it's Robbie Williams, right? But then you get Tony Adams, Paul Gascoigne, Les Ferdinand, all these guys. And I get burnt for two goals. I'm awful, right? I'm yeah. awful. But we're in, so we're in the change room anyway before we go out. And uh, what's his name? Um, oh, God. Former uh, uh, Alistair Campbell is on the team as well, right? And uh, we're in the, the, the spin room. doctor guy. Yeah, the spin doctor. We're in the change room before. Not the, not the N17 spin doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's... <laughs> N17. No, no. The Labour, former Labour spin doctor. Um, just to clarify, he takes out a set of, this is mad. Maybe oh, I have to clarify. Happen. Did spin doctor or saw doctors? Do you what? Did you say spin, doc, spin doctor or saw doctor? Oh, I got mixed up between the spin doctors and the saw doctors. We'll have Mayo fans and Galway fans. I'm so sorry. Oh, Doyle, it's just if like, you couldn't. I'm like, so I mean, sorry. <laughs> you're trying to get, can you even, you won't leave the house after COVID. After There's this. your accent. I thought you said yeah, saw doctor. Right, just, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Blame the culture. So look, the spin saw doctor, right? Uh, we're in this dressing room. This, I, I hope this happened. I hope I wasn't just hit by a bus and it was a weird coma dream. But we're in this dressing room and Alistair Campbell starts playing the bagpipes. And Jean-Franco Zola and Maradona get up on the physio's table and start doing a jig. And we're all in this kit. And then we line up in the tunnel to go out. It's live on telly. And they play Arcade Fire. Um, you know that amazing da, da, da. YouTube this it's, it's phenomenal right so we're in the tunnel we're lined up the presenters the lights and then the realisation hits me I run like a duck <laughs> I was just thinking happy feet <laughs> I run like a bloody duck what am I going to what am I going to do how am it's I going to okay. gonna gonna hide Maradona's done two lines of coke anyway for, so that's alright how am I going to hide here so we go out in the pitch and the roar, right? The ro 74 and a half, there's a roar of this place. It's like nothing I've heard before in my life. I'm sick. The gastroesophageal reflux is in full steam. I'm like, no, I don't want, get me some Gaviskin and Gaviskin. <laughs> I'm in bits, right? So we all break up into little corners to just warm up and juggle balls and all that. I'm in a corner, no kidding, with Maradona and Ginola, right? David Ginola. Maradona's like, keep you up, keep you up. I can't move my legs. They're like sticks. Because <laughs> the fear. I, have you ever been stuck with fear? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's yeah, awful. Yeah. It's like being in a dream when you're falling, right? Yeah. I'm stuck with fear. And they throw the ball to me and it bounces off my knee. It's, it's just, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, so anyway, we start playing anyway. And that's actually, it's fine. I have a couple of good moments. Uh, I'm responsible for both of England's goals. They won 2-1. But like, you know, I, I got to try and I'm tracking Les Ferdinand, right? On a break into the box. Okay. He's on my left side. Gascoigne's making a break on the right. Ball's going to come in. It's okay. I've got Les covered. Next thing, he's on the other side of me and he's heading the ball in the net. I'm like, how did, how did that happen? Anyway, I, because I was shit. So it doesn't, but the point is we're in the middle of this game and I see a bit of space in the midfield. We're 15 minutes in. We're getting a bit cocky and I'm going, <laughs> I hear myself say, Schmikes, Schmikes, Peter Schmikes. Schmikes. Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. Schmikes. Yeah, yeah. 
So he rolls the ball out to me and I make a little break and I see Maradona's free in the middle of the park, right? So I lay off a ball to Maradona and I make a break up the right side and I go, yeah, 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 Diego, yeah, 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 yeah. And he <laughs> I want to back off you, Maradona. Passes back to me, right? And I cross the ball in for, for, for Gordon Ramsay. Standard, Saturday, Saturday afternoon. But uh, no, that's fine. So about two minutes later again, I see a little, a little bit of space. Guys are getting tired. Smike, Smike, ball, ball, ball. He lays off the ball to me. I make a break, right? I pass it into Maradona. I see the space. I make the break up the right wing. I go, yeah, 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 Diego, yeah, 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 yeah. And, um, and, and he doesn't pass. He tries to do some tricks, and he gets tackled. And I shout. For fuck's sake, Diego. <laughs> For fuck's sake, Diego. <laughs> Duck feet. Wah, wah. For a moment, I forgot who I was. Oh, that. <laughs> the... wah, wah. Oh, the... oh that... this is. Christ. This swings back to what I was talking about as Irish people having fucking notions about ourselves. <laughs> to turn oh, around <laughs> twice to roar for the ball off. And when he didn't give it to you the second time. Like yeah. all your dreams should be made when you number yeah. one got to pass it to him. Yeah. But then you wanted it back and you yeah, did it again. Yeah. And then you basically called Maradona a prick in front of 74 and a half thousand people. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it wasn't great. That's, do you know what? Do you know, I, f- fuck you, Craig. Yeah. Going on about right. it, a rough upbringing and yes. all the rest of it. Well, I didn't say rough. I just we... said not, you know, not privileged, but maybe it was. Actually. Yeah, I think we're putting you back on the privileged list. Number 19, at least. <laughs> I mean, no, do you know something? I'm saying not always easy. Not always easy. Isn't that the point? Anyway, he should have passed me. <laughs> that's one of the best stories. But that does sound like as you're saying oh, it out man. loud, that sounds like something you would definitely dream of. And then it's a dream for sure, because there's a chef and an actor in there as well. Yeah. You're like, there's yeah, the whole thing was nuts. This doesn't make any sense at all. <laughs> that whole thing oh. is nuts. And, and then about... <laughs> so I had, their, I had a few of their numbers on my phone, you know. Um, they were lovely people. Like Robbie Williams, who was the captain of the team, was just the nicest bloke you'd meet. I mean, just... Jamie, all the English guys were great. All our lot were really good. Gianfranco Franco is like, you should come and you should come and play five side with me in, you know, in, 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 in Sicily. I'm like, no, you're going to see me play soon. And then you're going to not want me to do that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> Jamie Redknapp is, I had, I had, I had this number on my phone just from, and about a year or two later, I went to a wedding. A mate of mine is no longer with us, sadly. Um, also called Jamie, <clears throat> James, Jamie. Uh, his, his ex-girlfriend was getting married to this fabulous guy, right? And we were invited to the wedding myself. The Brits do that kind of stuff, don't they? Oh, like, yeah. they just... no, no. oh no, these are all paddies. These are all paddies. Oh, are they? Yeah, these are all projects. So uh, we're, at, we're at the wedding anyway, and my mate, my mate Brian's like, oh, the, what, what a wedding. Oh, my God, the new husband's fucking amazing, isn't he? He's in, Let's ring James. Let's ring him and tell him how great the new husband is, right? Because, <laughs> like, you would, right? To tell the ex-boyfriend who was our friend that we're actually at their ex-girlfriend's wedding and we're having the Absolutely. best time. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's our duty to ring him. And yeah. So he goes, give me your phone, give me your phone. So he gets the number and he rings us. And the speaker when we're like, ah, she's great. You're an arse. We're abusing, abusing him. And then there's a moment of silence. After, and I, all I hear is, now, this guy, James, is from Waterford, right? I hear a voice going, hello, Craig. <laughs> and I give me that fucking phone. I said, it's fucking Jamie Redknapp. I had to delete his number immediately. I said, this can never happen again. I have to pretend this moment never. I hadn't spoken to Jamie Redknapp since we were in the thing, because we're, you know, it was just coincidence. And I just happened to have, two years later, ringing him, abusing him at a wedding for no reason at all, thinking he was another Jamie. So that's that. So that, that was, went well overall. The overall picture I painted of a great experience. I mean, that was that was a double whammy of brilliance for your mates. Not yeah. only ah, were yeah, they going to start a slag, but then they, they can slag you in the, in the moment. Yeah. For yeah, making the bollocks of exactly. yourself in front of Jamie Redna. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you, I, I, can't, I can't let you go because I've, I've been fascinated from when, always when it comes to presenters of things, because I've always, how do they get it out of themselves? How do they get it out of their face? What's their prep? I'm not going to go into that shit. I don't know if you do one and the push ups and all the rest of it. But was it a conscious thing day one to go, I'm just going to be me or I'm going to try and be smooth? Am I gonna, or how did you build into it? Is like, is that something you learned from? Had you a good mentor in the BBC, or because you oh, seem to have your own slickness? Your you know style, what I mean from the get go. Like, slick is the wrong word. It's 
it's easy on you if you know what I mean. <laughs> it, no, but some some amount of presenters would give you a dose. You're like, I can't, I can't go through with this. I can't. It's. Do you know what it is? I think, and that's why I'm so grateful to the RTE stuff. I spent a few years trying to be someone I wasn't. Oh, perfect. You learned it at early doors. And right? I thought, I actually need to be me. And it's the only way I can do it. And you know something? If they don't like it, well, that's okay. Yeah. I can't change it. And the minute I started just being myself, doing the things I know about, yeah, everything got better. Because there was a long, there was a time I was going to just chuck it all in. I found it too hard. I hated getting abused and, and just the articles and I did in the papers. I just didn't like it. And I thought, because you're reading it and you're going, nah, do you know something? They're a bit right. <laughs> That's the hardest. <laughs> when you read something nasty about it and you go, yeah, I'd probably write that as well. And I thought, well, I just have to be myself and then I can defend myself. And, and with B, what, I think what happened, I mean, I'm 10 years BT now. When I went to BT, they were like, yeah, just, we want you to just be yourself. We've seen you do stuff and we love that. Just do that. Class. And, you know, I'm kind of involved in the production a wee bit there with them as well. And, you know, uh, at a certain level, a light level, but uh, you can engineer things to suit you. And, and if you, you don't make mistakes because it's not a mistake. It's just you being you because we yeah. make mistakes in life. In a conversation, we slip up over words and don't worry about any of that stuff. You just try and get the best of everyone uh, out of everyone around you. And what's lovely about sport is and live sport is you get to do all the cool live TV and the countdowns and red lights and the cameras and all that stuff. But you're not the star of it. You're not the centre. Yes. Of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sports people are. They're top of the pile. The footballers or the rugby players or the golfers, whoever you're talking about. And then next in line are the pundits. And you live somewhere right at the bottom. But you get to do all the fun stuff without your name on the door. And I love that. It's the best thing about it. It, it. it really is. And I suppose there's a there's a pomp. You're not having to create a pomp either because you're like, well, you're watching this because you want to watch a game. Yeah. Do you know, you're just the ringmaster who's happy. To, yeah. I, I used to do these uh, things for Heineken on the road, hosting these rugby clubs, you know, and it'd be old rugby players and stuff come. And it was great because there was it wasn't like comedy clubs. You were going, <clears throat> this is a bit of comedy about to start. You literally go, Dennis, you stand over there and uh, Mick Galway, you stand over there and that'll be fine. Everybody's going to look in this direction. But I've it would have done a 50 of them. They'd all gone exactly like that. And I did one with Alan Quinlan in Limerick and the lack of shits that they could give for either one of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> Quinny was like, have you not got some trick for fucking sorting this out? I went, <laughs> it's called putting your big head in front of him. I says, he, I says, literally, it's all Shannon players too. He goes, of course, you have no respect for me. They're all 12. <laughs> like, you know, just, I said, well, we're getting paid to do this regardless. Yeah, just, and I'm drinking free Heineken. So just head down. <laughs> plow yeah, head down and just get through it. I know. I know. And you have, you have your own production company. Is it with Brian? It's a yeah. it's three rock. Yeah. Three rock. So, so we did a, uh, I was at, I was doing this awards thing and we make a, we make a rugby show for the people who have this league and their boss was up making a speech and he said, I really, oh, also just big, big thank you to third rock. I'm like, it's not third rock in my head. It's one of those things. Do you correct it? Do I correct him? And uh, at the table of all the lads, right? The <laughs> from table the of all the, all the gang from work, like Martin Bayfield and Ugo Monia and Ben Kay and Austin Healy and Sarah Elgin were all, Ali, you can all sit at a table crying laughing right because they knew they got the name wrong yeah. and i walked over to them you know and they said, correct but i can't correct them and it's called it's called uh it's called three rock so we made it we um excuse me <coughs> terrible with the COVID. terrible with the COVID today there are a lot um, of there'll be a lot of sympathy coming for you just in case you're wondering that with good. there's i've good. got bags of it over here one second <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, we made a documentary with Brian about, I was always fascinated about, people who had asked me a lot, you know, why when the Irish rugby team are lined up, does everyone not sing Aaron Levine? And uh, I would try to, well, if you, if you, you know, some want to, some don't want to, some want to, but no, if they do, they might get beaten up. It's tricky. And I said, well, we should do something on this. And and so we made base, that's the, that was the, the genesis of that documentary, Shoulder to Shoulder, which yes. is why Ireland had this rugby team. Uh throughout uh throughout the troubles in particular uh, and lovely piece it was great for Brian to do first time he'd done something really that in depth and it takes a long time it's a real passion project those things and we made that and we, we the best thing to do is to set up a company to make it and then we started doing more stuff and more stuff and more stuff and then um 
we started, oh, it just got bigger and bigger. And then a, a big, fantastic company called All Three Media, who make probably most of the shows that you watch on TV, they own all these little small production companies, wants to buy a small chunk of us, which they've done. And it's allowed me make my brother leave the BBC, Keith, and join us. And he's our, he runs the production company for us now. We're making them. Um, we do loads of stuff now. We're making another documentary with Brian about mental health and retired sportsmen. Uh, and I say that deliberately. It is only retired sportsmen because the men are a bit tick when it comes to looking for help. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And, and, and we so so we focused on them. And we make uh, the highlight show for ITV, the rugby highlight show, lots of other material. So it's been really good. Yeah, it's 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 great. It's good. Uh, that is for you need. I don't know if you find this. I know a lot of comedians would write as well to keep mm. that side of their brain happy when you're not performing or when you're not on camera. It's just, to have something else is very important to balance the brain. It's deadly dangerous not not writing, but and I'm not because I listen to gurus or anything like that. But I do find my, I get up now about half five six in the morning, come out to this thing, and it doesn't matter what weird shit. And I mean some weird weird shit. <laughs> It's written. I can't show it to some people, but it's just look at this not surprised face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you write about? What do you write this morning? Uh sexy cats. <laughs> that they're they're out of fucking control, Craig Doyle. They're out of control. They used to be ugly, snaggle tooted bastards. Now all of a sudden people have these cats that they're kinda hot. Do you want to see my hot cat? You have a hot cat? Yeah. Come on, There's oh, a let's, good chance he I, might just go for it and show you his anus. That's what he. Does. Oh well, that's classic, classic cat. Qu any children down there? Quino, <laughs> can someone bring me a cat? <laughs> I'll just do the secret cat cat call. See if they come. Sadie, where did you learn this? Where did you learn Sadie. it? Can someone bring me a cat? Oh, bring Melvin up. Brilliant. I'm going to introduce you to Melvin. He's not as friendly as Sid. Sid's only is one working eye. He just wanders around looking at me. <laughs> like a pirate. But he thinks he's a dog. And he's great. I think he was trying to hang around. We have a boxer. He's trying to hang around with the dog all the time. Go and bring Melvin up. Yeah. Oh, he's coming up now. Melvin's a bit of a... I don't know. He's a bit of an enigma. Oh, here he is. Oh, you've got a mask on. Here, I've got to... I've just got to grab him. Give me a sec. <laughs> This is a first for the podcast. I love this. <laughs> oh, stop. Oh, stop. What is that? It's like some Egyptian god. Am I supposed, am I supposed to pray to it? This is Melvin. Good Christ. Melvin yeah, right. looks at me like I, he needs tetanus yeah. after looking at me. Look at the eyes. He hates me. He'd, he, he'd eat your face. He... Think like the lack of respect that that cat has for me it's not for I, any I, human no but you know I, i'm kind of okay with it you know like yeah. like servants in downton abbey are happy to be servants whatever it is about looking at your cat what what's what what kind of cat is that it's got sleeves a siamese a siamese is he, is he hang on is he a siamese <laughs> yes <laughs> Okay, that and that's so case in point. He's case in point. I think he's purring in French. <laughs> it's actually Mesopotamian, but you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I learned it. You wouldn't know anything about that because I'm a fucking cat. He's actually <laughs> purring in tongues. <laughs> but you see what I mean? Yeah. That this is for some yeah. like so that cat the, is way did too good looking. About them? Did you write a story about cats doing? Like, what was the story? No, it didn't. It didn't get into me banging any cats. But what it was is that it's out of control and we need some sort of legislation to bring in about it because I can't. And, and it's no offense, but it's and this actually goes counterclockwise because it's normally really absolutely booked to the root, root ugly people that have these astronomically good cats. <laughs> <laughs> As you pick cat That's hair right. out of your mouth. I know. Yeah, I know. It's really but, bad. But this was it just it was. I, but again, that was this morning's thing. And it was like, well, right. that's out of the way now. Let's see. It may or may not go anywhere at all. But it had to get out of my head. Like, where would that, could that turn into, would that be like a sketch? i will be a bit. It'll be a bit for stage. maybe a book, would you, you know, what, like, could, is, do you, when you get an idea, do you think, I'm not going to put a lid on this. It can go anywhere it wants to go. Absolutely. Is that, is that how Absolutely. you do it? And there's only one way to trial it. And that's to take it to the stage. I'm in the Roshan Dove in Galway tomorrow night. And that's where it'll start. Right. And it'll be literally, it, and because it's one of my, it's, you know, it's probably a second home to me at this stage. For, literally, I will 
go with it. And if it's going nowhere, I go, well, we'll fucking cap that one. Uh, you know, but <laughs> yeah. we'll get somewhere with it because yeah. I still have a duty to people that paid it, paid for a ticket. Yeah. We'll get somewhere with it because if it made me kind of go, <laughs> then there's enough there. <laughs> There's enough there. And we'll come back then later in the year with a product because there's a seed. Once you plant that seed, yeah. you're off to the race. I think they're I think they're a source of because they're funny without trying too hard cats, right? And I like the way they choose when to hang out with you and they come mm. up and they rub the face and they go and just when you think you got them, you go, I actually have somebody. They just turn around and they show you their bum hole and yeah. walk off. And it's yeah. like it's like they're laughing at you. I like I like that about them. You know, the dog <laughs> is just simple. He's like, I'm grateful. I'm just always grateful. You know, isn't aren't we aren't we sad creatures that the ones we're drawn to are impressed by are the ones who kind of think we're a piece of shit? <laughs> and that, my friend, this is, is marriage. <laughs> <laughs> this has been an entire podcast of us both kind of going, we're both a bit shit. And then you bring a cat in that looks hotter than ten times the people we know. <laughs> like you put a pair of trousers on that cat, and I swear to God, it's getting elected. It's too good looking wandering around. Be a local counselor. I just want to you. say Mia Varadka there so much, but I thought that would be a bit cheesy. But you can have that. It is low hanging fruit, and I let I you know. have it. I let you have it. I let you have. It. I won't take up. I know you're bored out of your tits, but I, I won't take up any more of your time. Any other podcasts? <laughs> we're starting. Else? We're starting a whole brand new one right now, and it's all about rugby. We didn't hardly touch on rugby once, yeah, which I was going to. Rugby. But sure. Um, <laughs> Uh, you go, okay, I'll give you a 10 second rugby answer on. I promise it'll be 10 seconds on a rugby question. Uh, was Edward Van Espick everything he was cracked up to be when it came to history? Yeah, yes, apparently. <laughs> apparently, no one knew the game better. And one of the most respected writers ever. You shit the bed on that one, didn't you? You thought I was going to ask you something about Edward our Leinster. Van Esbeck. I don't know. That's what's wrong with me, Craig. Shit like that comes into my head that I haven't thought of that man since a documentary I saw on VHS or a book of his I read, I don't know how many decades ago. I'll just throw this at you. That's a good name for a sexy cat. It is a great name for a sexy cat. Jesus. Well, I mean, we overshot ourselves with our dog. Our dog is a miniature schnauzer called Baroness. <laughs> and she actually won the nose of Wicklow, the nose of Tralee, and she was the Wicklow nose. Yeah, well, when we lived in Wicklow, this exists. I did, my wife finds these things. I didn't was, know. Was this the little dog show they'd have up? Because uh, when you lived in Escape, it's obviously like a little bit of England. It's like Surrey or mm. Sussex. All up our neighbors went. Come on, church. Yeah, <laughs> up by the church. There's like there. I would say one in ten, maybe two in ten, are English in in Enniskerry. Uh, and uh, yeah, they have a little dog show, don't they, up by the church? Mm. Is that where the yeah. nose? Yeah, yeah, one? yeah. Um, I brought a, some rough dogs up there. I brought lurchers <laughs> and stuff up there with, with cuts on them just to shake it up. Hey, that's not no way to speak about ex-girlfriends prior to your wife. I get you. I get you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was no, it was countrywide. It was actually country. It was oh, over. Okay. We brought her up there, but we got shunned because we didn't have the right accent when we went up there that time. Uh, but we lived amongst all those people, our neighbours who shared a drive with us, who were very proud to be Irish, of course. I'm like, really? Because that does never, they'd have never heard or seen anything like you, never. I was, um, yeah, I was definitely in education, if nothing else, if nothing else. But it was hilarious. They used to quiz because we shared a, a gate. Like they would quiz friends of mine <laughs> who might press, you know, who would pull up to the gate. I remember one friend, he's from Belfast, Colin Geddes. Now he is a, he's a big man, but he pulls up in a brand new Range Rover. He looked apart from a distance, but when you get close, you're like, oh, Jesus Christ. He, like he played Ulster School Boys covered in tats as he said himself looks like he would definitely protect a very wealthy eastern european man do you know that's who he looks like well she quizzed him for 10 minutes before he even got to say hello to me and it was the first time visiting me like here is this fucking wagon outside i said that's the neighbor that's the neighborhood in fact you know what they're probably, like probably thought you were a lotto winner do you, do you know she was, was it took him about a year and then <coughs> my landlord let it slip that i had been on television a couple of times ah uh. And then all of a sudden, we were absolutely besties. It was fantastic. And we, I used to pop down to get sourdough for all of us in Avuka on <laughs> Saturday yeah. mornings. It was fantastic. Um, there's a friend of mine, lives in Cabin uh, and he's moved. You know, 
no really you know people who do really well in life but they're trying to keep a little kind of lid on themselves so mm. they move house but in the same estate yeah 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 <laughs> we're gonna have that one i've walked past that one for 12 years it's got he, a slightly bigger driveway yeah slightly yeah slightly bigger drive but he lived in this house and it was look he's done really well he's a great businessman but he's done really well but he always oh, he loves gadgets the newest tvs and the newest all this <laughs> one day a lot of kids arrived at his house they knocked at the door and he opened the door and went, hiya, hiya. And he went, yeah, mum says you won the lottery. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to tell me that. But uh, yeah, love that stuff. God, what am I going to do now for the rest of the night? Listen, we'll just I stay think. texting each other because we it was like a weird, for anybody who's wondering how it came about, we were texting each other back like the most flirting, flirtatious teenagers <laughs> at the Wesley Night <laughs> Disco. It was ridiculous. We didn't know what each other wanted from it. But I think we got a lot from it in the end, Craig. <laughs> I don't, I still don't know what we've talked about. It was, uh, what it was is verbal fondling for about an hour and 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. So we both both come away. I mean, we're both unscathed. I think everybody can appreciate yeah. that, you know, yeah. neither one of us, you know, going to be ring of the guards about the situation no we haven't shamed have... ourselves no There's i don't no, think so no need for anything to worry about truth but... be told it all absolutely shit the bed and went downward as soon as you brought that cat in and yeah i, I can't i can't changed, i can't compete with that things. cat changed things didn't it should have brought sid in he would have calmed the room <laughs> craig Doyle, thank you so so much this has been brilliant crack <laughs> if nothing just to take the boredom away from you albeit your you know your old man is looking going christ he's a boring young fella. oh my god he's, a, he's on a podcast <laughs> you know do you know what he'd say <laughs> do you know what he'd say he'd look down he'd go what the fuck's he doing he's on a fucking podcast and he'd turn around to his man and goes What's a podcast? <laughs> he would be giving out about something he didn't know about. He just wouldn't like the look of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not healthy. It's not healthy. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, God. They're great. Well, that was fun. Thank you very, time, very much. What time's next week's one? <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very, very much. I didn't ask him at the end, Craig, where should people find you or what's coming up? Because I'd say he was in no mood for that kind of old shy talk. I say he was just in the mood for somebody to keep him from being bored out of his head. <laughs> but do follow him. He's actually well worth following him because he's good and funny on Instagram. Craig Doyle, would you believe, is his handle. Um, <laughs> there you go. Anybody who is kind of wondering, I wonder what he's like now, you know. He's as weird as I am. He's as weird as I am and has a warped sense of humour. Uh, he'll be doing uh, opening for me on the rest of my tour. I forgot to mention that even to him, but I'm going to get him to open for me just so we can test his comedy chops and see how he fares in the room and, you know, gets heart palpitations and whatnot. Again, thank you very, very much, Craig Doyle. To all the Patreons, the Absolute Legends live show on the 3rd. There'll be more of my brand new show, Clather, touring around the country. If you are listening on whatever platform you're listening to, hit subscribe. You know what I mean? If you can rate, like on Spotify and Apple, do. Other than that, go on away, enjoy the rest of the weekend. And I'll talk to you again next week. Gonna listen, thanks.